Hello, good evening and welcome everybody. Thank you for attending the first of our 2023 webinar series from the College of Practical Homeopathy in the UK. My name is Son Jandu, I'm one of the directors at the college. We are a global college and we have students from all around the world. And we've always been doing these webinars for many, many years. We stopped for a little while and we're happy to resume. You can have our link and our QR code on the page if you wish to know more about us as a college. That's not what this is about today. It's about us sharing some of our knowledge with you in the hopes that you can improve your homeopathic awareness and experience. It's not to make you prescribers, it's for general information. And our speaker this evening is Ellen Kramer, who is the founder of this college. Next slide, please. Ellen Kramer is the founder and current director of the CPH alongside with myself. Some of you have made known her for the last 20 and 30 years because she was also the co-founder of another college before this called CHE, the Centre for Homeopathic Education. She left that to found this because she wanted to progress and share the way homeopathy is practised all around the world. And we created this college with different ways of doing things. Ellen, as many of you know, is a world-renowned and respected homeopath who has worked alongside such eminent homeopaths as Robin Murphy, the late Robin Murphy, and many, many others. She's an international speaker, recently spoke at the House of Lords to help the House of Lords decide how to advance homeopathic education in the UK. That was a very nice honour indeed. And she has written the practical homeopathy courses that are taught here in the college. We have an undergraduate course and a postgraduate course and sits on many panels to advance homeopathic education in the UK, as well as globally across the world. And many of you will have heard about her because she's a regular contributor of many articles in the homeopathic journals. And many of you will already have a book. She's the author of A Practical Guide to the Methods of Homeopathic Prescribing, which you can search for. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome our guest speaker today, Ellen Kramer. And Ellen, if you're there, good evening. Thank you for doing this. The floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody from wherever you're sitting and joining us here at the College of Practical Homeopathy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the first of some of the skin disorders that people will bring to you in clinic. If you're a home prescriber, there are remedies that you can use yourself to help your teenagers help yourself. So this is really to encourage more people to use homeopathy, not only as a professional, but as a lay homeopath, because actually that's the route that I took before I became a practicing homeopath. I saw wonderful results with it, and I encourage you to have fun learning how to take responsibility for your own health, because once you do take responsibility for your health, you can do the things to support your family to get healthier and healthier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about my clinical experience when dealing with acne, uh, what people present. Okay, so the overview of the skin is that it's a living dynamic organ. And this organ represents what's actually going on inside you. So if the skin is not healthy, then things on an internal level are not healthy too. So you need to look at the underlying cause of why the skin is producing things like acne, eczema, psoriasis, etc. Okay, so the cause is very important. And I'm going to be repeating that all, you know, a lot as, as I talk. So from where we come from at CPH, although this is what we call therapeutic prescribing, and a lot of homeopaths will say, well, that's allopathic. You know, you're just looking at acne and giving remedies for it. Well, actually, no. Therapeutics is a way of applying and using homeopathy. And it will support your patients whilst you actually look at the underlying chronic reasons why they have skin problems so the principles don't change so here at cph what we say is find the cause you can see the effects if that effect is acne you can see it 
What does that tell you? It tells you that all is not well in the digestive system, especially the large intestines. Okay. Once you've done that, what you want to do is look at what are your obstacles? What is it that's stopping the body from healing? Because we as practitioners, as homeopaths, and even if you're a home prescriber, you need to investigate why the body's not doing what the body's supposed to be doing. You're supposed to have clean, clear, healthy skin. If you don't have it, then there's something else going on from a, a deeper level. Okay, so I've mentioned obstacles to cure. Now, if we've got had mental, emotional issues and traumas, this can knock the whole digestive system out of balance. And there's a cascade of events that happen because when we're shocked and traumatized, we lose essential minerals and nutrients. Also, when you're looking at skin problems, we're also looking at how the organs are functioning. So when we're looking at the skin, we want to look at the liver because the liver actually governs the whole digestive system. And we want to look at the digestive system because the skin is a reflection of the large intestines and the lungs. So people used to think that the lungs were sterile, that the skin was sterile, but it's not. It's full of beneficial bacteria, our friends, and they help to maintain balance. And actually, the large intestines governs the bacteria on the skin and the lungs. So it's important to get that into balance. The other thing that you want to look at is toxicity. It's all very well looking at remedies to fix skin problems, but they're not going to do the job if the patient or your family members are actually ingesting toxic material. What we think is food may not necessarily be food. So you want to look at what you're eating. Okay. And then what has become more and more obvious for 21st century patients or teenagers is their cellular malnutrition. That's one of the things that acts as an obstacle to cure. The remedies are going to ask the body to balance itself. And if it doesn't have the resources, it's not going to be able to do that. So cellular malnutrition is a real problem. You know, we can look at third world countries and say, oh, you know, they don't have the right food. But right here in Western countries, the vast majority of people are suffering from cellular malnutrition. So we need to go back to the diet. If you're a lay person or a practitioner, there's constitution. That is the inherited resources that we get from our parents. And you could look at it as your bank account. The healthier the family is, the healthier and stronger your constitution. So you can't apply 19th century homeopathy to 21st century people. They have different problems. And this is why here at CPH, we teach many ways of applying your homeopathy. Your 21st century people are very toxic. We are being exposed to toxins in the air, in our food, in the soil. We're also exposed to toxic emotions. We're constantly bombarded with negative um, stuff when we read the news, et cetera, et cetera. And that doesn't make us happy. And all that negativity has an impact. So if people are anxious and fearful, this is going to have a big impact on their skin. Okay, understanding the obstacles to cure will really help you get maximum results. Okay, in homeopathy, there's often a confusion around constitution. Now, this seminar is not going to look at that because it's a much deeper thing and we can um, 
look at that in other seminars. But your inherited nutritional status is very, very important because that means the bacteria are intact, the gut is healthy, you're able to adapt to your environment. And generally, when people are constitutionally balanced with the right resources, they're quite happy. They view the world from a much um, more positive way. When people are malnourished on a cellular level, they're actually generally quite negative about their environment and where they live. So these are things that you need to take into consideration when you're looking at how you're going to deal with um, acne and skin, skin diseases. So taking care of our skin is important and it starts with the gut. It starts with hydration. It starts with what we eat. And eating a diet that is nutritionally dense is very important. Okay, so when you're looking at skin, which is riddled with blackheads and whiteheads and things like that, it's damaged. Um, you know, this is coming from the residue of toxins of not being not being in balance. And for some reason, it seems that we've been brainwashed into thinking that things that happen in our body randomly appear and they don't. There's always a cause, there's a reason. And if you're lucky, there are no obstacles to cure. So from an energetic perspective, the skin is seen as connected to the lungs and the large intestines. The emotion around this is grief. So when you're looking at skin problem, it's like, Going back to what happened, what knocked you out of balance? When did the skin start to get bad? So that's you know something to ask yourself or family members. So acne is an inflammatory skin condition that usually affects the face, the neck, the chest, and the upper back. And it's commonly known as pimples. And you can go into the chemist and you will find all sorts of creams. Everybody's trying to, to cure the problem at the skin. And actually, that's in the wrong, wrong place. It generally tends to start during early puberty. From my clinical experience, it's simply this. You have to look at the drugs the teenagers, or if you're looking at it from yourself, were exposed to before they hit puberty, because they make a difference to the type of skin problems. So the skin is very susceptible to the sort of things that we absorb in our colon. And if our liver is congested, the liver is gonna have a big um, control over the digestive system in its ability to break down because the liver is filtrating toxins and helping the body to deal with them. So if the blood becomes toxic, and as you'll see with a lot of the skin remedies, they tend to be blood purifying remedies that clear up the skin. So a homeopathic detox program. Because energetically the lungs govern the skin and the large intestines, it's important to make sure that the bowels are eliminating properly. So if somebody comes to you or your family member is constipated, you've got to address that constipation. Because if you give remedies and if you don't deal with that, all that's going to happen is the skin will get worse. You have to adjust to what's going on. So keeping the bowels clean and making sure that the liver is able to clear out its toxins. And we'll talk about that later, you know, later on. So even if you're giving things like psyllium husk, flax, seed, flax seeds, chia seeds, et cetera, that will absorb the toxins and start clearing out the large intestines and getting everything, everything going. 
you want to consider pre and probiotics. Now, I'm going to emphasize this again at the end, because without the beneficial flora, you're not going to get beautiful skin. The pH has to be right for beneficial flora to um, stay in balance. So it's a sort of 80-20 principle. 80% 80 of your beneficial flora should be good and working with you. 20% may be negative, but if that balance goes out, this is when all your problems start. So when I'm looking at this, I just see that a lot of people come to me with skin problems and I'm looking at a history of antibiotic abuse. I'm looking at a history of uh, female contraceptive abuse. You know, synthetic hormones have the same effect on the digestive system by destroying the gut flora. In fact, what I'd say to people, you know, if you're dealing with 21st century um, people, do you know what? Most chemicals that we take, thinking that they're going to help us, generally tend to destroy the beneficial flora. So just be aware of that when you're giving remedies and you think that, oh, they're not working. You know, homeopathy doesn't work. That's not true. Home homeopathy works very, very well. But you may not have gone back to the cause and your obstacles to cure. This is why I'm putting a lot of emphasis on that. Supporting key organs. You need to support the lungs and the bowels before starting with your indicated remedies. Because if you don't, you're not going to get the results that you want. So, you know, some of the key remedies that we look at is Nux Vomica. Why? Because Nux Vomica breaks down chemical toxicity in the liver. So it's my go-to remedy for supporting the liver. Then we've got carcinosin. Now, carcinosin is a brilliant remedy because it unsuppresses. All the suppression of, sim of symptoms that people do, like taking Dianets, you know, all these hormone drugs, antibiotics to get rid of the skin. Well, they may give short-term relief, but actually long-term, they're in fact making and exacerbating the problem. So usually I see patients when they've tried all these things and they don't work anymore. That's when I see the mess. And I've got to walk people through unraveling it and they get there. We were designed to have beautiful skin. Okay, so Cark will unsuppress Morgan. Now, Morgan is one of the bowel nozodes, and this will support the beneficial flora <clears throat> to come into balance. Then we've got sulfur. Sulfur is a remedy that actually supports the liver. For the liver to function properly, it needs the right amount of sulfur so that its um, detox pathways are healthy. And then we've got thuya that deals with all sorts of um, antibiotic abuse, et cetera, in the, in the um, large intestines. So if they've had the BCG, now the BCG is a vaccine that they give to teenagers around about the age 11, uh, age 11 in the UK. I don't know what they do in other countries, but in the UK around about age 11. So children get BCG after they're born, and then they do another BCG around about 11. And this can trigger off allergies and it can trigger off skin problems, okay? So if people have never been well since the BCG, then you need to consider that as part of your detox and give it back. If they've been on Retin-A creams, uh, reduce the application slowly because the Retin-A is actually affecting the liver. So you need to take that into consideration whilst you're, you're detoxing and clearing up the skin. If they're taking all sorts of creams and suppressive, you know, topical applications, there's so many in the shops, I can't, I can't um, <laughs> go through all of them. Usually they're topical, they strip the um, skin, they add to the pH imbalance on this in the skin. And the more you do it, I mean, I remember being a teenager and my skin was horrific because I'd had so many antibiotics uh, um, before I got to my, uh, before I got to my teens. I tried everything. 
I did everything to have beautiful skin. I, I just made it worse. And it was only when I was older that I suddenly realized how important it was to um, use probiotics and bring the pH into balance. Okay, so again, all these chemical products that you're applying to the skin is actually adding to your skin problem. And that's why the minute you stop, it's the acne seems to get 100 times worse. So that has to be reduced slowly whilst you put in other measures. So the detox will always include Nux vomica. You've got Gertner. Now, Gertner is another bowel nozode. And that bowel nozode actually helps with cellular malnutrition. It bring, starts to bring the gut into balance. And the gut flora begin to break down and help the body to absorb what it needs to do so that it can begin that process of healing the skin. Okay, so when you're talking about women, women who've been on the pill. So what happens is this, this is a scenario. Usually they get, they're teenagers, their skin is bad. They go to the doctor, they get put on a, a, a hormone. Um, and of course the body's constantly trying to adjust itself. So the synthetics turn into uh, male androgen hormones and this just messes the whole system up and adds the problem. So in my detox for hormonal stuff, you see, I can't get to the indicated remedy until I've addressed all the toxins that people are adding to their problems. If they came to see me or you know, to a practitioner straight away and they didn't have these obstacles to cure, you wouldn't be doing any of this, this prescribing. But because they're adding to their problems, you're having to go through the long walk to get to the beautiful, to the beautiful skin. So it's a re-education process, looking at the fact that we are designed to have beautiful skin. So if there's hormones like Dianet that they were given to suppress the body's hormonal system, then Looking at the big, if you if you repertorize, you know, this is for the practitioners, and you look under toxicity, hormones, ailments from, you're going to see some of the big remedies like folliculinum. And folliculinum as a remedy will start to bring the hormones into balance. The acne that people get, especially women, is usually around their chin. So that's where they get it. They'll notice that when they have their periods, that spots come up on their on their chin and folliculinum will it will work really well then you've got pulsatilla it's another big remedy for never being well since hormonal abuse and again you'll see the, that it's around the chin the face that they've got um their acne what will come with that is the mood swings the tearfulness around the period the acne gets worse around around the period okay then you've got sepia and again sepia has never been well since being synthetic hormones the other thing i want to alert people to about synthetic hormones is all the xenoestrogens and hormones that are in our environment and our plastics and which are being pumped into the food that people are eating so it's important to find out what people are eating if they're not eating um, organic meat, especially chicken, people love chicken and chicken are, are, are really pumped up full of hormones to make them fat and juicy for sale way before their time. So it prematurely ages chicken. So I'd say, look, you know, if you're eating a lot of chicken, you need to stop and go organic because all the synthetic hormones in it are prematurely aging you. They're destroying your gut flora. They're, they're suppressing your immune system. They're adding to your problems. You, you know, you won't be healthy if you're doing all these things. Okay. And also a lot of people will come with their synthetic hormone like 
Danette, Danette, which is a synthetic hormone they give to suppress acne. You may want to add that to your detox. Okay. So if they're on synthetic hormones because of acne, I don't actually tell them to stop it straight away because I know that if they do, the skin is going to get really bad. Okay. So there's a weaning process that we you have to go through as you're detoxing with the, the drug impotency. So when you have the drug impotency, this is what we call a tortopathic remedy. You can buy a lot of tortopathic remedies from Helios, from Ainsworth. They do a really good selection. So detox is for men. If there's no real remedy picture, then my suggestion is that you give orchitinum back in potency because then that will help balance their male hormones. They may be, again, be exposed to a lot of female synthetic hormones um, and are very, very suppressed. So have a look at that for skin problems. And then there's Calibrom. And this is a very good remedy for overweight young men, um, which is itching and it's worse on the shoulders and there may be scars. So there's you know different things that you can do for your, your male and female uh, family, friends, or if you're a homeopath with your, with your um, So what I'm going to do now is run through some of the general remedies for acne that you can use yourself, especially if you're a lay practitioner, you can you know, buy these from the, the homeopathic pharmacy and taking into consideration what I've said about the importance of the lines of elimination being open and keeping the liver healthy. So we'll talk about that later. Okay, so we've got a remedy called Astros Rubens. And this is one of the main remedies for acne of the face, which starts in puberty. And as you can see, Astros Rubens is a red starfish and it's got lots and lots of bumps on it that look like acne of the face. So in homeopathy, we say like cures like. So Astros Rubens, once you've cleared the uh, toxicity, you've dealt with the underlying obstacles to cure. Now you can start seeing the, the, the remedies that will do the job that they were intended to. This is very, very different from, you know, what people saw in the 19th century. They just didn't see this stuff, but you'll see it. And we all know that, we saw, that a lot of people suffer from skin problems, etc. The other remedy that I, I really like and I want to introduce people to is brown rice. Now, brown rice is very, very important as a remedy because it purifies the gut. And this is very important for acne, purifying the gut. Um, it encourages all the major organs to detox. So it clears out the toxicity. You may want to add this to Nux to Nux Vomica and some of your detox remedies to clear out all the toxicity. Now it does this not only on a mental emotional level, but also on a physical level. The gut is about letting go. So you, what you'll see with acne is usually they're constipated. So this will help in that process. The brown rice clears a whole alimentary canal. And what it does is it calms inflammation. So this is a very good remedy for the liver, the spleen and the pancreas. And so if there's gut inflammation, IBS, Crohn's, all those things, it's an excellent remedy to use as part of getting the gut prepared for indicated remedies. Okay, so what you've got is calc, calc soft, and this is for severe acne that stays in one place for weeks. And it's got the spots are, they're spotty and um, there's pus. Okay, so it's a very, very important remedy for, it's one of my favorites, this along with um, silica for clearing, for clearing acne up. Carbo veg. 
This is, along with calc salves, these are blood purifiers, okay? So they, you know, and they have antiseptic properties. They clean, clean the blood, they purify it. They support the liver to function properly. They clean out the gut. So we know that vegetable car charcoal has this big effect on, you know, clearing, pulling out toxins out of the system. But you do need to be stooling properly. So if you think that, you know, going to, to the toilet once a day is enough, you'll most probably find that it's not enough. Uh, you really should be stooling at least uh, um, half an hour to an hour after a large meal. That's the sign of a healthy gut. So carbo veg is fantastic at blood purifying, clearing out, helping the skin to, to look a lot better. Um, we've got gunpowder. This is, again, a big remedy for pustula. So, you know, you see that acne with a lot of pus and, uh, and you know, it's all over the face, the back, on the chest. Um, and again, it's another blood purifier, huge spots that will appear on the cheeks, around the, uh, you know, around the cheeks, on the chin, gum paddle will purify that. Okay. Hepar sulf. Again, hepar sulf is very similar to calc sulf. They're more or less the same remedies. Um, and what hepar sulf does is if there are pussy spots, it'll either bring them to a head or it will actually reabsorb and help the liver to clear out the toxicity. Okay. And then we've got sanguinari again. Acne on the on the on the face, it's worse just before the period. So that goes in alignment with things like folliculinum, sepia, pulsatilla, all the hormonal remedies where you're seeing the skin gets really bad just before the um the periods. There's the, the skin becomes very, very dry, but that with that dryness comes this, it's it's really strange. It's there's it's dry but greasy. Um, it's, it's really weird. It's almost like the cells are dehydrated, but there's a lot of oil on the skin. And the periods can be suppressed. So you may see this after somebody's been on the pill for, for some time. Okay, so for the forehead and the cheeks. Um, sorry, I'm not seeing that Okay, there's a lot of cystic. It's, you'll have to forgive me because I'm not seeing what my remedy is on, on this page. If someone else can see it and tell me, Som, are you there? Ireland, yes, I am. This is silica. Yeah, yeah, sorry, because I, I've got this thing on the top and I can't get rid of it. Okay, we're on silica now. Okay, great. Now, silica is one of my favorite remedies because silica is about malnutrition on a cellular level. The importance of silica is that it's the lungs actually need most of the silica in the body to, to function properly. So healthy lungs depend on silica. Silica is also very important for collagen absorption. So along with vitamin C, you need the right amount of silica to be able to utilize collagen, which repairs the gut and keeps the skin elastic and healthy. So it, to me, it's one of the most important remedies when you're dealing with skin problems. Along, it'll work very well with calc salt and help ourselves in terms of clearing acne from the face. So the pimples are deep. And what happens when they get these uh, pimples is they leave scars on the face. Now, silica um, as a remedy, it helps 
to repair scarring. So if there's a lot of acne with, you know, pock marks and things like that on the skin, silica is your remedy for supporting your body to do that. We've got some combination remedies that we use. Now you can phone up the pharmacy and get those combinations. Um, SSS, which is basically carbo veg, silica and sulfur. We've talked about each of these remedies. The carbo veg purifies uh, the blood. The silica nourishes and it helps the person to absorb essential minerals and nutrients. And then you've got sulfur. Now that will support the liver to do its job well um, and get everything going. We've got Baptisia echinacea and Lobelia. They're also blood purifiers. And then we've got Natmure, Calimure, Calisalf, Gallium Aparine, Trifolium Pretense. Again, the blood and lymph cleansers. So all of these are very, very important if you want to have healthy blood and put everything in the right context understand your cause, remove your obstacles, and then these remedies will work amazingly. Okay, now we can move into miasmatic remedies. And the miasmatic remedies are nosodes, and they basically actually tell you the predisposition for getting various problems. All the miasmatic remedies will help the beneficial flora come back into balance. And that's why they're very, very important. So BCG is one of the miasmatic remedies which you can give. And it, it's one of the things that has a big impact on teenage, teenage acne. So you've got serinum and that's acne, which is worse during the periods. You know, um, it's worse from, you know, eating refined processed foods. You've got, tuberculinum now this is for what we call tubercular people people who have a predisposition for lung and large intestinal problems carcinosin is a nozo that's very very good for acne on the back but as i mentioned before in the detox this is one of the reasons why we use it as a detox remedy and then you've got cephalinum as a nozo now this particular remedy is for scarring that you know deep scarring along with silica will help to, to support the body to heal, to heal that scarring. Okay, I'm gonna quickly go through the herbs. You've got Berberis aquifolium, which is, a use, is useful as a skin drainage, and it cleanses the complexion of acne, psoriasis, and is for dry eczema. You've got Berberis vulgaris. This is one of my favorites because it's a, it supports the liver, it supports the kidneys. Okay, and it gets the liver functioning properly so that it can detox well. You've got carduous, one of my go-to um, herbs, milk thistle. Again, that stimulates the bile, gets the liver functioning properly. And then you've got trifolium pretense, which is also again a, a remedy that supports the health of the skin. So you can use it for treating acne and psoriasis. So let's look at nutrition for the skin. Ask the patient, or if it's you who's got skin problems or people in your family, make sure they're not eating mucus forming foods, things like lots of dairy products, et cetera. And this is going to be a no brainer when I talk about a particular um, nutrient that's essential for the gut. Um, so just to cut down on all processed foods, stay away from synthetics, from oils, um, you know, like soya oil, rapeseed oil, all those things. Uh, stay away from things like soya foods, too much wheat, which damages the gut. Uh, peanuts, because peanuts, if you're not careful, have aflatoxins in it, which can be quite toxic. Staying away from, you know, processed drinks. Coca-Cola and all these sorts of things, they're not good for the skin. Stay away from it, give the gut and the body a chance to repair itself. You wanna eat foods that are rich in nutrients, that they're dense, okay? Foods that are going to clear out the system like brown rice and millet whole grains, prunes. If people are constipated, 
I find prune juice or prunes with um, bio yogurt really works well. Beans and Brussels sprouts, cabbage, all the things that actually have fiber in them. You want to eat things that have fiber in them. And of course, you've got things like aloe, aloe vera juice, which heals and repairs the gut. Okay, so supplements, probiotics. So what you do need in terms of probiotic, you want a prebiotic, inulin, and a probiotic. There's something called butyrate. Now, butyrate is what is essential for the bacteria because the bacteria will eat the um, roughage and they'll produce butyric acid. And this is important in preparing uh, and repairing the gut lining. And it's very, very important. Now, butyrate is actually found in butter. And we've all been told not to eat butter, but actually butter is one of the richest foods in butyrate. And it's essential. You know, when they do bowel, you know, look at, look at some stool tests, They'll tell you that you, whether your butyrate levels are low or high. And butyrate is essential for a healthy gut and good skin. There's another bacteria called L. plantarium, which you'll find in fermented foods. And again, L. plantarium repairs the gut lining. This, this bacteria, its job is to repair the, the gut lining, but it needs pre, prebiotics to be able to do its job. You've got the B complex, which is needed for healthy skin and proper circulation. Your essential fatty acids. And I, I recommend things like krill oil because krill oil, um, you know, it doesn't go rancid. It's easy to absorb and it will support you with, you know, omega-3 fatty acids. Vitamin C, this works very well with silicon, with silica to promote collagen utilization in, in the gut. And then you've got vitamin E, which neutralizes the free radicals and the damage to the skin. And of course, zinc. This works with vitamin C. It aids healing and enhances the immune function. And, and you know, one of the things about healthy skin is sleeping deeply so you can regenerate. So the B vitamins and zinc help you to do that. Okay, some useful recommendations. So try to, to keep it, the skin, so that it, this oil is not sitting on the surface, that the skin is moist and that the oil is in the, in the cells on the skin, not sitting on the surface when the skin's looking dehydrated. Um, avoid wearing makeup. The, the makeup is full of toxins. So look at what you're putting on your face. Um, doing a mixture of spring water and cider vinegar. Now, this will help to bring the pH balance back to the skin. And this is what the good bacteria thrive on. The pH must be right. If it's been stripped by all the products people use, you're not going to get the pH functioning properly. Uh, I recommend that you use a natural sulfur-based, you know, soap without the, um, the chemicals that strip the skin. And also avoid oil-based cosmetics. Give the skin a chance to heal and repair itself because sometimes it's the skin products that we react to and that affects the skin. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. I'm looking forward to all your questions. Our next webinar will be Exner and that will be on Thursday, the 6th of April. I'm gonna hand this back to Son. Hi, Alan. thank you for that. Yes, we, um, we've got a few questions which we'll put to you. Some are a bit more specific, which are almost constituted medical advice, so we won't look into that straight away. But okay. we'll somebody, Somebody asked a general question. Is it better to put creams on broken skin or let it heal first? It depends on what cream you're talking about. You know, because if your skin's, if your skin's broken, there are, there are ointments like calendula that will actually speed up that, um, you know, that repair. 
So it, it, this is a question, it's like, you know, how, what is a piece of string? It depends on what you're putting, you're putting on the skin. Okay. That's, that, that's my answer to that. Somebody else also asked about a specific condition that affects elderly people mostly, bullous fempicoid. Um, bullous fempicoid is, is a rare skin condition that affects the elderly people, and it normally starts with an itchy raised rash. And then that goes on to developing large blisters that form on the skin. So someone said, is there something specific for this? And then I know my thoughts on this. You know, we, we don't treat clinical label names. Yeah. So it'd be nice for you to share your thoughts quite succinctly, because I know we've had the audience listening for a long time. Let's just keep the answer succinct. But uh, to me, I, I, I go back to cause effects and obstacles to cure. Exactly. You know, because you know, the elderly are exposed to a lot of chemicals. And I would want to know what, you know, what's going on. So no, remedies don't fix things. They support the body to come back into balance. And we'd need to look at the case on an individual level to see what's going on. Because we have over 3,000 remedies in our mat med, you see. Okay, that, <clears throat> we had another question. Somebody asked, can clearing remedies be taken to clear allopathics that are taken daily? Well, this is this is what we talked about in terms of detoxing. You see, so the detox, this is why we often have to detox before we can actually see who the patient is and what their skin is doing. Um, and there's a whole process that the patient has to go through. It's not like, oh, well, take this and stop your drugs. You can't do that. There is a detox process. And as I said, you know, when I said, talked about that Danette, Dianette, the synthetic hormone, don't stop anything. There must be a weaning process. So, yeah. Thank you. I want to put the last three together. Then I'll say to make some closing remarks as well. People have asked, I'll ask the three questions in one so you can, you may wish to put them together. One was somebody asking, will you give us an answer about age related warts? Somebody talked about detoxing steroids and petroleum-based creams, yeah. and are there any acceptable alternative creams? And somebody said, can you talk about dark patches on legs? And again, like we said, we're not constituting individual advice for people, so I want to ask you to keep this general, Ellen, for this information. If, if well, I'm going to keep it, it, it general. You know, cloasma for the dark, again, for the dark patches that appear, these tend to be hormonal. And it, it, Everything comes back to the patient and the underlying causes okay. of why they've got these dark patches. There's no specific that I can say, okay, you know, take this and do that. You really need to know why those dark patches are there. And a lot of patients get okay. there from for different, uh, you know, from different places. You know, so you'll often see this is age related, and I'll say, yeah, this can this can be due to hormonal changes and synthetic hormones that people have been exposed to. So you can see that it, these things are much deeper than just, oh, there's a remedy for a remedy for that. Uh, what else did you ask, Som? We asked about dark related patches, yep. dark patches, detoxing steroids and petroleum-based creams, and about age-related warts. Okay. Again, you can clear and detox all of, you know, the steroids from the, the um, system. And that's one of the beauties of homeopathy. It's a system of medicine that has a specific way of applying drugs back in potency to support the body to clear out the residue of toxicity. I think it's the only system that can do that. And you can do this generational you know even if it's like three generations have been exposed to this toxin you can clear it out it's an amazing system of medicine but again i'm going to go back to cause effects and obstacles to cure you need to see the case and work out exactly what's been going on what they've inherited etc age-related warts you know that would be another another um <laughs> a webinar on the skin because a lot of people are exposed to you know, to many, many things that unbalance the, um, you know, the bioflora and the pH. And this is where the virus will take hold. So again, back to the gut, back to toxicity, the principles don't actually change. Yeah. 
Alan, thank you very much for that. I'm going to make a few closing remarks for everybody listening. Uh, everybody, thank you very much for attending. Um, I'll say a few words to those in attendance. Our audience is a mixture of people who are interested in homeopathy, homeopathic practitioners, some who are currently studying as well. So for those of you who are interested in homeopathy, we are a college here. We teach practical homeopathy, which is hands-on, how to deal with any case that you may experience in the world. And we have other people that may be classical homeopaths, etc. At the college, we teach at least 15 different ways of applying, different methods of applying. And as you've heard Ellen talk, we back it up with herbs, nutrition, and supplementation. So we give an, an, an holistic approach to treating conditions. What we also ask people when we teach is, don't just treat the symptoms that people present with, try and look at the cause and how they got there. That's what, what a practitioner does, takes a case and studies it. But some of you might want a quick fix at something. You might have some ideas here. It may enrich your conversation with other homeopaths. For those of you who wish to study and learn, by all means, log onto a site. You've got a QR code. You even have an email for our admin. My name is Som at the CPH. If you want to contact me directly, send an email for my information, and we can help you along that site. At the same time, we provide these webinars as a service to homeopathic medicine to raise the awareness of the alternatives to drugs that can toxify your body and how you may use them and help you have better informed discussions with natural and homeopathic practitioners around the world. If you have subjects that you'd like us to do a webinar on, by all means, send us an email to admin at the CPH and that helps us shape the future topics out there. We have a list of topics that we wish to discuss. We're gonna make them more interactive in the future as well. But as we start off in 2023 with this month, thank you very much for attending. Stay tuned, stay engaged with us, and we'll have a wonderful year. And we look forward to welcoming some of you, at least, as students here who may wish to practice this system of medicine in a harmless, non-toxic way and help other people. Thank you very much for attending, everybody. We bid you a farewell and have a safe and healthy evening. <laughs>